Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 11, Episode 2. Two truths and a lie, or two truths and one lie. All right, it's episode two, and we are getting the new taglines. First up is Kyle, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be about the town they live in and how she's a native to Beverly Hills. Well, yes, it's about the town. This town is a game of chess, and no one's taken this queen down. Did Kyle just call herself a queen? Okay. Lisa. Yeah, my lips are legendary. And they'll never gloss over the truth. Garcelle, if you want a starring role in my life, you better drop the act. Dorit, dress like there's no tomorrow. And then tomorrow, do it again. Sutton, anyone who doubts my exquisite manners can kiss my exquisite ass. Crystal, Hollywood is full of pretenders, and I slay them all. Erica, the strongest substance on earth isn't diamonds, it's me. Okay, I have to say, as much as I hate the taglines, and I do, I feel like Beverly Hills I hate the least. So, I mean, you know, take the win. <laughs> All right, this episode opens with Garcelle in the car, and she is FaceTiming with Sutton. She's on her way to meet Kyle to have, you know, a talk. Even though they saw each other at Dorit's barbecue and they were cordial to one another, they didn't really talk, you know, one-on-one. -on -one, so that's what this is about. Next, we are at the Erica Jane office closet. A uh, quick question. Is Erica going to shoot all scenes in a closet full of clothes? Just wondering. Have we seen her outside of a closet, is my point. All right, so she's with her assistants, and she's picking outfits out for maybe Lake Tahoe. There's a knock at the door, and it's Sutton, and she shows up with a gift basket because, you know, that's that Southern hospitality. Erica tells us that they bonded over being Southern ladies from Georgia, and then they start talking about the upcoming Tahoe trip. Sutton tells a fun Tahoe story. I guess a friend won a plane trip in Tahoe or around Lake Tahoe. I don't know. And Sutton said, there was this rando standing in the back. And he said, I used to be the pilot for this plane, but I lost my license because I filmed a porno and the girl gave me a knobber. Erica goes, she gave him a blowjob? Sutton, well, I didn't know what that was, so I had to ask. Then in her confessional, she goes, now I know what a knobber is. And I could have lived without that information. <laughs> Sutton talks about moving out of the house that she and her husband had together and getting her own place and like it's a fresh start. And she goes, I feel like I have a little pretty mess inside me. Erica loves that, of course. You know, a strong and passionate woman who doesn't give a fuck. Erica, I love it. Okay, now we are at lunch with Garcelle and Kyle. Kyle thanks her for coming. Garcelle says she was reluctant. Kyle says, yeah, I sensed that. You know, I was really excited to get to know you, and I thought I expressed that by, you know, being playful with you and everything. We get a flashback to when they first met. I don't know, Kyle was, like, on the floor under Garcelle's skirt. I, <laughs> I guess that's what you meant by playful. <laughs> anyway, Garcelle said, yeah, I got that sense. Kyle says, and once I heard things being said, I was like, wow, you didn't even give me a chance. Garcelle said, I just felt like I wasn't being heard. Kyle said, regardless of why you felt that way, I just want to give you a hug and start over. Because honestly, there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting along and having fun, Garcelle. And we can let that go. If I can fast forward to you calling me out for not paying that charity. It cut me to the core. Kyle, well, I'm not the one in charge of collecting the money. That was someone else. Eh, wrong answer. You need to apologize because you knew Garcelle did not do that on purpose. You wanted all of us to know at the reunion that Garcelle didn't pay that bill to make Garcelle look bad, even though I know you knew that it was probably just some red tape or something. Garcelle said, when I finally got the information, it was sent to some address that I haven't used in years. Kyle, I know you're a good person and you took care of it right away after that. 
if we had been getting along fine, I never would have said anything. So you're admitting that you made Garcelle look like some despicable person who doesn't pay a children's charity, what she promised them, when you knew it was most likely nothing more than some kind of a clerical error. Garcelle, would you have said that to one of the white women? Now, Kyle looks shocked. She says she doesn't think that way. It never occurred to her. I believe that. I do think she would have done that to anybody she wasn't getting along with. She would have been happy to have any of the other women look bad, regardless of race. And that I do believe. But what she's guilty of is not being sensitive to the fact that Garcelle is black. So when Kyle says it never occurred to her, Garcelle said, yeah, that's because you don't have to deal with racial stereotypes. But as a black woman, Garcelle does. Garcelle gives an example of getting terrible service at a restaurant and having to think about tipping them anyway to try and avoid them thinking, oh, another black person, they don't tip. In her confessional, Garcelle said, I think all everyone in Beverly Hills is in their own little bubble. Side note, I love this confessional look, you guys. Her hair and dress match, and it is the most beautiful blue. So anyway, Kyle apologizes, and she tells Garcelle that she appreciates her telling her that. Now we are at Crystal's house, and her brother Jeff is there. We're in the kitchen. She's trying to get her daughter Zoe, who's five years old, to drink her green juice, and she's like timing her. Let's see if you can do it in three minutes. In Crystal's confessional, she said, it's a cliche to call a Chinese mom a tiger mom, but it's true. I'm a total tiger mom. She also gives another rundown of Rob's resume. In his 20s, he directed The Lion King. He directed all of the Stuart Little movies, Haunted Mansion for Disney, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, Forbidden Kingdom. I don't like to brag about myself, but I do like to brag about my husband. So does Jennifer Aiden. She tells us that they get to travel the world because of Rob's work. She loves to schedule everything. She thinks that her 9,000 square foot home is relatively small compared to their friends. She calls Lucy, her housekeeper, the boss because she's like her right hand. I actually do like Lucy. She's really sassy. And it's funny to me because... It doesn't seem like Crystal is the type of person who would put up with that, but she does, and I kind of love Lucy for it. Like if she's helping Crystal in her closet or whatever, there's a scene with Lucy going, oh, that's ugly. (laughs) She's taking a package in and opening it. More shoes? How many feet do you have? So yeah, she's sassy. Um, We find out that Crystal's brother, Jeff, is there. He's been there for months because of COVID. But he lives in China, and he's like an international pop star. I mean, maybe not international. He's a Chinese pop star. But when he's living with Crystal, he's her manny. Okay, so now we are at the airport with Lisa Rinna. Well, a small airport, like for private planes. And Garcelle is the first one to arrive after Lisa. It's the Lake Tahoe trip, and it's pretty awkward with just the two of them. And then Kyle is the next one to show up, and between the two of them, Garcelle will take Kyle. I think she's she's a lot more upset with Rinna for her behavior last year than she is with Kyle. Kyle's asking them how much luggage they have, and Garcelle said, I have a checked bag, a carry-on, and a duffel. So is this just an overnight trip then? Because the Beverly Hills ladies... Uh, do not joke around when it comes to luggage. Case in point, Kyle just said, I too have a checked bag, a hanging bag like with my coats, a duffel, a carry-on, a hat bag. You know, I'm thinking maybe, Kyle, you could leave your hats at home. She is such a hat person, and I'm not really here for it. Anyway, she goes on. And a grocery bag with her oat milk and an espresso machine. Seriously, though, how long are they gone for? Like, she can't go a few days without espresso? Kathy arrives next. Oh, thank God. I love me some Kathy. She tells us in her confessional that she's never been on a girl's trip before. And as soon as she gets there, the first words out of her mouth... Mrs. Hamlin, do we have any, like, little treats to eat? (laughs) Can't be. Rena goes, I made sure we got a good chef with good things to eat. I think she means right now, though, Lisa. Like, Kathy needs a little something for the plane. All right, everybody else arrives, and they take off. It's an hour flight. 
We are reminded that Garcelle does not like small planes. She talked about it in the reunion, and she said when she was a model, she'd have to be on all these little planes all the time. And I guess there was kind of a scary incident, or maybe more than one scary times on the plane. So she's, uh, you know, kind of got her eyes closed. She's breathing through this, and uh, yeah, she's not super happy. Now we get each diary room account of what Lake Tahoe means to them. We start with Crystal. I've been to Lake Tahoe a lot, actually. When you grow up in LA, it's, it's kind of a locals trip, really. Garcelle, I've never been to Lake Tahoe. When I think of it, I think of bears and cold. Kyle, to me, Lake Tahoe is one of the most magical places in the United States. Erica, I don't have any good stories about Lake Tahoe. It's pretty. Dorit, I've never been to Lake Tahoe, and I don't really know anything about it, but I am getting a Lugano, Switzerland vibe. Um, all right, so that's it. I guess we've already heard Sutton's Lake Tahoe story. We are staying at the Sherman Estate. It has 17 bedrooms, 18 bathrooms, and it's 17,000 square feet. So I'm assuming these six women can all find a bedroom they like. The guy who's showing them the, around the place, they're in the, the uh, first floor, the main level, and there are some bedrooms down there, and Garcelle just dropped her, her bag in one, and she's like, oh, this would be fine. But then the guy tells them that on the first floor, bears can get in, so to make sure you have like the doors closed, locked at all times, and Garcelle's like, oh, nope, nope, she grabs her stuff. <laughs> you don't have to tell a black girl twice. We do not do bears. Everyone picks their rooms, and Kyle's looking for her luggage. And then they all realize that they have to bring their luggage down the steps themselves. Lisa goes, I'm sorry there are no bellmen, but COVID won't allow me to. And Dorit's confessional, there's a lot I can do myself. I'll even do my own glam this trip. But I do not want to carry my own bag downstairs. Kyle goes in to check in with Kathy. She refers to Mauricio as Mo again. Why does she insist on that? In her confessional, Kyle says that she is so relieved and happy to have Kathy back in her life. She was depressed when they weren't speaking for so long. Okay, so Kathy has been talking about this fan that she brought for like 10 minutes now. Has anyone seen my fan? It's just, it's a small fan. No, my fan? She's been like looking all over the house for it. So I guess she found her fan, but now her fan won't work. So now Kathy's complaining about that. I guess Kathy needs it to sleep. And so Kyle's like, well, let me look and see. And then Kyle discovers it wasn't plugged in. So we've got some real pampered ladies on this trip, guys. <laughs> All right, so Kyle is cooking dinner that first night. Now she's down in the kitchen with the chef. But, you know, I mean, that poor chef. She is really running around getting everything. Kyle's like, where's the salmon? Okay, well, is there a pasta pot? Okay, it, where's the... Oh, my God. The girl's running around more than she probably would if she was cooking the dinner herself. But I will say she does kind of have an attitude, which I love. Because <laughs> Kyle's running her ragged. Now she's like, um, do you know where I can get a cheese platter? And she goes, I'll get one now. <laughs> All right, so Crystal comes down to the kitchen now, and she said, how can I help? Kyle, oh, no, I got it. Of course you do. She said, you can get me a drink. Do you know how to make a margarita? No, right? Crystal said, yes, I do. I can do that. Now everyone's sitting down to have a little happy hour while the salmon cooks, and Kyle talks about her new nose. People think I look younger with my new nose. Looks like you should have got kicked in the face sooner. Side note, Kathy is into the message tees, isn't she? This is like her second t-shirt with some kind of words on it. Kyle accidentally calls Sutton Garcelle, and Kathy points at Garcelle, and she goes, well, I called her Kyle. <laughs> I mean, that's a little different. This is just like, Kyle was just like getting the name wrong. She didn't think she was Garcelle. You actually thought Garcelle was your sister, Kathy. So... Kyle does her impersonation of Kathy now, walks up to Garcelle. Kyle? <laughs> I mean, I will say this. Kyle is good at those impersonations. I still remember her walking like Teddy that time when they were in, I think, Italy. That was funny. All right, now the smoke alarm goes off, and Kyle's like, oh, my food. Oh, yeah, I bet you thought that chef was going to keep an eye on it. 
No, she was probably like, mm, you're in my kitchen. You take care of it. Anyway, the salmon was very charred. The pasta looked good, though. She mixed it with olive oil, garlic, basil, and lemon zest, I think she said. So Kyle's trying to call it blackened salmon in Erica's confessional. It's not blackened. It's burnt fish. Kathy, for some reason, starts calling Kyle Doogie. Kathy Hilton, I love you, girl. (laughs) Doogie. In Kyle's confessional, she said when she was born that Kim and Kathy called her Doogie. She's like, I have no idea why. In Kathy's confessional, the producer asks her, why do you call Kyle Doogie? And her answer is, because she's like a little Doogie. The producer, what's a Doogie, Kathy? It's a cute little child. (laughs) Okay. It's a love name, like a little Tootsie Roll. Lisa asks them um, what their age difference is, and it's nine and a half years. And Kathy said, and she never annoyed me. Kim would love to torture me. And Lisa goes, well, that's Kim. In her confessional, she goes, I could say Kim tortured me too. We see flashback to Kim bringing the bunny back at the reunion. And Lisa, single tear, slowly rolling down her cheek. I think I'm going to take a minute because um, this just doesn't feel quite right. Okay, so now Sutton has brought a gift for everybody because whether she's hosting or not, that is just Sutton. She's got little bags for everyone lined up and she asks um, Garcelle if she can help her like by passing them out. And she goes, yeah, sure, Sutton. Because of COVID, this is a really important thing for all of us to have. And I think especially going into election week next week, it might be even more important to have. Well, it's a flask. Yes, the ladies got silver flasks with their initials engraved on them. Crystal's confessional. Um, I've never used a flask, no. I'm going to start calling her confession cam crystal because she is like a different person in these confessionals. She is so snarky. I don't think she has said one nice thing about the ladies in her confessionals. And this is only episode two. Oh, girl, it is going to be a rough reunion for you. Because you know how the season can end and all the ladies have made up and they're friends, but then the reunion starts and for some reason they're fighting? Oh, Yeah, the reason is they watched each other's confessionals all season, and they're mad all over again. So when the other ladies get a little listen at Crystal's confessionals, I don't think it's going to be good for her. Now, Kathy, on the other hand, people are going to be dying. She says to Sutton, now what do I put in this? Everyone's like, whatever you want in Kathy's confessional. I don't know what I'd put in it. Mouthwash, maybe. (laughs) Yep. That sounds about right. (laughs) Okay, dinner is over, and now it's downstairs for cocktails in the parlor. So they all head downstairs, and they're sitting on these, you know, couches in a circle. Kathy, uh, (laughs) Kathy has apparently lost her phone. And so she goes, Kyle, you have to go out tomorrow and get me a new phone. Oh, God. Everyone is laughing. And Garcelle said, could you imagine if we all had our sisters here? Erica, I don't have a sister. Okay. Garcelle's like, well, if you did, Erica, I would kill her. I would eat her when we were little. I don't doubt that. Erica is very scary. Okay, guys. Guys, it's time to play Two Truths and One Lie. Crystal, you go first. Side note, it would take me so long to try and think of something because I would want the lie to be really good, but also it would take me time to think of like two things that my friends didn't know that were true also. So like I would need, I would need to know before I got to the party that this is what we were going to play. I would come up with the best ones. (laughs) Anyway, Crystal, immediately. Okay, I was arrested. I worked at an escort agency, and I've been propositioned to become a madam. Huh? Who propositions someone to become a madam? Like to run a whorehouse, is she saying? 
So what, someone thought she had good business acumen? Seems like an odd choice, but okay. It is strange enough that I'm pretty sure that's the truth. So she says those three things and everyone is silent. There are exactly zero guesses. And Reed says, what is the lie? Crystal, arrested. Um, did we forget how to play the game? Dorit, you are so good at this game. And all of you are bad at the game. Somebody was supposed to try and guess which one was the lie, right? So Crystal tells them that she was not an escort herself, but she did work at an escort agency. I was the operator, she said. Erica, I was going to say. Okay, so Sutton is next. I was a barista at Starbucks. Right away, everyone's like, no, that's the lie. No. I have stolen something, and I was a virgin when I got married. Okay, the stolen something is so vague. I mean, everyone has stolen, a could have been a piece of candy when they were a kid. So that one's probably true. Erica, she did not work at Starbucks. And everyone agrees, that's the lie. Sutton. That is rude, because I was a barista at Starbucks. I don't know why that's rude. Anyway, she goes, I wasn't a virgin when I got married. (laughs) She is more disgusted by the people believing she was a virgin when she got married. Crystal's like, you worked at Starbucks? Like, to Crystal, that's worse than stealing. Dorit goes, okay, who's next? Erica, okay, I've got mine. I wore a wire, and I was a witness in a government case. I'm adopted. I used to work for the mafia. Okay, now I'm thinking that Erica made kind of the same mistake Crystal did, in that two of those things are related to each other. Like, I worked for an escort agency, and I was asked to be a madam. Those kind of go together, so I think that they're both true, and they were, and the I got arrested was the lie. And so with Erica's... I used to work for the mafia, and I wore a wire in a government case. Those kind of go together. Like, all right, maybe she did, and then turned on them and wore a wire and all that. Um, So the lie is adopted. Well, everybody, I think Dorit said, well, you clearly weren't adopted. But Erica said, I was adopted by my stepfather. I mean, my mother was my real mother. So then Crystal said, well, what's the answer, Erica? I'll tell you privately later. I can't tell. I, I told too much. Yeah, I'll tell you privately later. What? <laughs> Come on. That was weird. Honestly, if that could get her in trouble, she's going to just throw those things out there for a game? No, I don't believe her. Maybe none of those were true. I don't know. Okay, so Rinna's next, and she goes, hmm, let me think. Oh, I'm not a good liar. I'm not a good liar. Garcelle's sitting back and she's like, you're an actress. <laughs> she can barely tolerate Lisa Rinna. In Garcelle's confessional then, she said, she said she was never that close with Denise. Do we have a lie detector test? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's at Lisa Vanderpump's house. Kyle goes, okay, Kathy, you go. I can't wait. Kathy, Okay. I worked as a dental assistant. I worked as a hairdresser cutting children's hair. I worked as a receptionist at the Waldorf. Someone said, wait, wait, all of those things are true. Then we see like a flashback to her telling everybody in different conversations these stories about herself. That yes, in fact, all three of those things were true. God. But I am more shocked by the fact that dental work And the haircutting that she did as a kid to the neighbor kids turned into real jobs for her as an adult. That, to me, is the most surprising. Okay, so I guess the game is over because Rinna announces that they're all going to bed. And we're going to wake up, do your thing, have your coffee, and then we're going to go do our thing. Good night. Kyle's like, should we have a party down here? All the boring people can go to bed. Crystal, Crystal, can you make me a drink? So everyone goes to their rooms except for Crystal, Kyle, and Sutton. Kyle's on the bar dancing now. So now Kyle says to them, Garcelle was really super adorable and sweet. Crystal, was she not before? 
Kyle. No, I just, I had a little issue with her. But when I saw her today, it was like a huge cloud had lifted. It was like nothing ever happened, Sutton. But y'all had a good conversation. Now we cut to Garcelle, who is going to Lisa Rinna's room. She said she wanted to talk to Lisa because the last time they talked was at that dinner. Lisa's like, oh, yeah, come in. Garcelle says, when I spoke to Sutton at Dorit's barbecue, I said to her, I think Lisa thinks everything is great between us, but it's not. Lisa, well, I have to say, I came home from that dinner and I said to Harry, I feel really good about our dinner. Garcelle goes, listen, you sat down and you were like, I did this, I did this, I did this. But I never really got to say how I feel. I thought you were a shitty friend to Denise. I thought you were a shitty friend to me. I saw a side of you, Lisa, that I've never seen before. And that scared me, and that's what I can't trust. Why did Denise think she was such good friends with you? And then you turn around and say to me, you know, we weren't really that close, Lisa. Well, the times that I got together with her, there were four of us, maybe once a month, once every other month. And it was very bonding. But then I maybe only saw her once a year. Garcelle, are we close? Do you consider us close? Lisa, I do. Garcelle is really wondering how she's supposed to trust Lisa enough to like share things with her, share how she's really feeling, or maybe something that she's going through without it backfiring. Lisa says, I can't promise you that. What? Yeah. Could you imagine having a friend who couldn't promise you that they wouldn't stab you in the back? I mean, it's honest, but it's insane. Garcelle, that's crazy. I can promise you that I would never come after you. Lisa said, I'm trying to move forward. I can't change what happened last year. What I'm asking is either you want to move forward with me or you want to stay in that. This is nuts. Garcelle is not asking Lisa to change the past. She's asking you to promise that you won't turn on her in the future. How can... I I don't know. I mean, without promising her that, how is she supposed to work toward trusting you again? Lisa said, I feel like you want to punish me. And that's okay. I get it. You just want to stick it to me a little bit. And Garcelle said... Absolutely. But you know, I've always been the type of person that I don't get angry enough. I've had to work on this all my life. I was taught to always be nice, be nice to a point where I actually had to learn how to say how I feel. In Garcelle's confessional, she said, there is really a big stigma with black women that we are seen as angry or aggressive. And those labels make you want to hold back because you don't want to fall into the stereotype. Side note, this conversation and, and, and what she's saying here in her confessional really goes along with what she said earlier about being afraid not to tip in a restaurant if she got really bad service. Now she's afraid to show anger when she legitimately has a reason to be angry. What she says to Lisa is, just so you know, it's going to take time, Lisa, and I'm okay with that. Then she jumps around and squeals like this, so delighted. And she goes, this was good because you were being honest. Garcelle, really? In her confessional, Lisa said, last year, Denise didn't want to deal with it. So she ran. But Garcelle is coming to me to say how she feels. Lisa tells Garcelle, I'm just going to be me. And if it's good, that's great. And if it's not, you'll tell me. And Garcelle said, okay. Meanwhile, at the bar, Sutton, I've gotten to know Garcelle, and I do feel like if you're talking to her in a really real way, she's going to accept it. But if you try to be fake or call her out, you cannot do that. Kyle, hold on, Sutton. You're not being honest by not acknowledging stuff before, because I did nothing until that moment. They're talking about, like, the bombshell at the reunion of saying you didn't pay the charity. So Crystal said, what was your bomb, Kyle? I had a charity event. Garcelle made a donation. She didn't pay. She has now. But I brought up that she didn't pay her donation. Crystal, like, winces hearing that. And then, and then she asks Kyle, do you regret doing that or no? Kyle, I didn't until I sat down with her and we spoke. She told me that it hit her deeply because there's a stigma. She told me with black people not paying their bills. I would never know the things she's referring to. 
Sutton, I understood Garcelle in that moment, but I didn't think that's where you were coming from. Yeah, I think we, a lot of us understood Garcelle in that moment. And yes, I think Kyle would have done it to anybody regardless of their race, but she did it to the black woman because she didn't know there was a stigma. And that's a problem. Anyway, Sutton's like, you know, I, I know where you're coming from. And Kyle said, obviously, I would never mean something like that. So Crystal says, so from the perspective of a person who is not white, when it hits you from stereotypes, it can be so painful that you can't see anything else. I have had friends say things to me, Asian comments, and stuff like that. Do Garcelle and I share the same ones? No. Sutton, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this. Um, I'm telling you right now, Crystal, you're not going to do what? I am not going to be talking about racial stereotypes when I am, Crystal interrupts, well, it's easy for you not to, Sutton. See, this is why. Crystal goes, oh, sorry, that's actually not true. You have a lot. Everyone does, Sutton. Why? Because I'm a Southern white girl? Do you want to talk about when I see dumbass rednecks on TV and that's supposed to be me? And Crystal goes, yes, I want to talk about that, Sutton. I also have stereotypes, but I don't want to bring it up, Crystal. That's insane, Sutton. We are educated. We are traveled. It is not insane. It's called 2021. Krista goes, so you just want to, are you one of those people that says you don't see color? Tell me you're that girl. I don't see color. Sutton, are you serious? Crystal, is that what you're saying? Are you that girl? I don't see color. And that is where this episode ends. Oh boy. If you guys watch my New York City housewife recaps, you know how I feel already. And that is, this is tough stuff. These topics are important, but also hard to do what I do, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. They're not funny. They're real. They deserve to be talked about, but they deserve to be talked about in a serious way. It makes it harder for a girl who is just trying to have a laugh at the expense of these crazy housewives. I long for the days when it was true escapism and we would make catty remarks about each other's clothes and who's cheating on who and I don't know, those silly things that seem funny to me. Not that cheating's funny, okay? Hold your cards and letters, I'm just saying. Uh, it's the outlandish accusations are what's fun to me and what's funny and not race relations, but that's what we have here. So I'm here to cover it all. I do think it's important stuff. And I am somebody who all along thought that there should be more diversity in the housewife cast. So now that we're integrating people of color We're going through some growing pains with these ladies. I think long before this, we knew that some of them were rather problematic, shall we say. And it's easy to kind of gloss over it and just be like, oh my God, she's a fool. And it's funny and we make jokes. Now it's, you know, now we have some tough stuff that we have to talk about. I am seeing some similarities between... The things that Garcelle is saying in her confessionals and the things that Ebony has been saying in her confessionals in New York. All I can say is this. My plan is to recap what I see and then talk about how I felt about what I just saw. And I don't intend to change that. So that's how this is going to go here. I know that you're going to have different opinions than mine. And that's what the comments are for, you know? And that's my plan going forward is to just keep at that and try to uh, have as much fun as possible and make fun of the silly stuff still (laughs) and hope that we can um, have a good time and be entertained. So I hope you guys stick around for the rest of it. And I will be back next time with the next recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I hope you join me. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.